You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby, Director of Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. This Shabbos is a special Shabbos, Shabbos Parshas Para. We know previously we had two different Parshas, the Parsha of Shkolim, which was right before the month of Adar began. And then we read last week Parshas Zohar, which is to remember Amalek. The shekel was about reminding the Jewish people that they're going to need to give the half shekel by the month of Nisan, which is next month. And and this was served as a reminder. And Parsha Zohar was to remember Amalek and his wicked intentions to destroy the Jews, to defile us, to ruin our self-image, and all of the other terrible intentions of Amalek. And that we read last Shabbos. This Shabbos is Parshas Para, which is the Shabbos after Purim, or the Shabbos prior to the Parsha of HaChodesh. We take out two Torah scrolls from the Ark, and seven Aliyahs we read Parshas Kisisa, the regular reading of the Torah. And then from after, we take the second Sefer Torah, and we read the Aliyah of Parshas Para, which is from Parshas Chukas, which is in the book of Bamidbar, Numbers, chapter 19, verse 1 through 22. We also read a special Haftorah, which is from Yechezkel, Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 16 through verse 38, in which we read, And I shall sprinkle pure water upon you, that you be cleansed from all your contamination and from all your filth I will cleanse you. And this is referring to Hashem giving us the opportunity to cleanse ourselves from sin, not only when we had the temple, but also in the coming days of Mashiach, we will have this privilege, this opportunity to cleanse ourselves from all sin. So what really is going on here? Why are we reading this incredible portion of the Parah Duma, the Red Heifer, this week, the Parsha, the Shabbos, right after Purim? Our sages tell us many reasons, but I want to share two of them. The first is that... This was a reminder for the Jewish people who were planning to go up to Jerusalem as it was a pilgrimage. People would go up to Yerushalayim for the holiday of Passover, of Pesach, that they needed to purify themselves before going up to Yerushalayim because someone who was ritually impure, they could not enter into the temple if they were impure. And additionally, they couldn't partake in the offering, the carbon Pesach offering, either when they were ritually impure. Now, what is this paraduma? What is this red heifer? It is the sacrificial cow whose ashes were used for ritual purification. If someone became ritually impure because they came in contact with a corpse, they were required to purify themselves by being sprinkled with water that had the ashes of the paraduma of the red heifer in it, and then they became pure. Interestingly, the kohanim, who were involved in preparing this special potion of water and ashes, they became ritually impure while the people they sprinkled with the water and ashes became purified. The paraduma, also the red heifer, was intended to serve as an atonement for the sin of the golden calf. Our involvement with the cow of idolatry was being healed or purified by our involvement with this cow, the red heifer. Additionally, we know that the paraduma was required to be unblemished. This was intended to recall the blemish that the Jewish people caused through the sin of the golden calf. So who is obligated to hear this parsha? So there is a disagreement in the authorities whether or not it's a biblical obligation or a rabbinic obligation. The majority of the authorities, of the rabbinic authorities, conclude that it is rabbinic of nature, but still a very important mitzvah because one of the six constant mitzvahs that we need to remember is the sin of the golden calf. And by doing this public display of reminding of the red heifer would be an opportunity for people to remember the sin of the golden calf. And in many synagogues, you have the gabai will make an announcement prior to reading the parsha of Parah that everyone should keep in mind and remember, have special kavana, special intention and focus when we're reading this portion, that it is a remembrance of the sin of the golden calf. 
women who were not involved at all in the sin of the golden calf are not obligated to hear the Parsha reading of Parsha's para. It is appropriate, though, that women should make an, an effort to participate in this communal reading of the Parsha of para. Now, in the event that the Parsha of para was not read in its proper time, it can be read any Shabbos prior to Pesach. Why? Because the Torah tells us that the teaching of the red heifer is a chukat olam, which means an eternal decree. So this tells us two things. Number one, it's an eternal decree. That means it should, it should constantly serve as a reminder that we should be cognizant of this mistake that we fell to the sin of the golden calf. And additionally, the word chok means a decree. A decree is not like a mishpat. It's not like a, a ruling. There are different types of forms of mitzvahs that Hashem commands us. Usually, they make sense. There's a reason given to them sometimes. But here's a chok. A chok is something that we don't understand the reasoning for it. And that is also very, very important for us to realize that we don't need to understand everything. Hashem gives us a beautiful Torah. The Torah is filled with pearls and gems of wisdom, of unbelievable clarity, of elevating spiritual connection. And when there's a single mitzvah, that's a chok that we don't know its reasoning, it's fine. Hashem wants us to sometimes do things just because he said so. So my dear friends, have a meaningful, beautiful parshas para. It should be a Shabbos where we're uplifted and connected spiritually with the Almighty. And remember that although we sinned as a people with the sin of the golden calf, Hashem wants and Hashem loves our repentance and our closeness to Him. So let's utilize this as an opportunity to prepare ourselves and get ready for the incredible and awesome days of Pesach that are just less than 30 days away. Have a magnificent Shabbos, my dear friends. You've been listening to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast, a Torch production. Become a supporter at torchweb.org because your assistance enables more Torah learning around the globe. To find more lessons offered by Torch, please visit torchpodcasts.com.